Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be making a walnut coffee table. This is black walnut here, um, which comes from the very beautiful forks of salmon. Uh, so it has a little bit more red. I believe it has to do with the iron content in the soil over there. But this is a beautiful piece of wood here and it is about 22 and a half inches wide all the way across and right now it's cut at 50 inches all the way to the end and that's to account for the planer snipe which is the next step in making this table. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet for the legs, but uh, hopefully I'll have that figured out by the end of this video, right? So anyway, let's get going to it here. And uh, I have to flatten this out, and I'm gonna use the planer for that. So I need to level this out and run the whole thing through the planer on this piece of plywood. So I'm gonna add some wedges uh, to the corners, to each corner, and in the middle, a little bit so that way it makes it stable on here with some hot glue. So that's the next step. Alright, so that should be enough wedges right there to be able to hold it onto this piece of plywood uh, while I run it through the big planer. So, the next step is to take it to my big shop and run it through the big planer. Alright, so now we're going to run this through the big planer and plane this down now. And, and then, we'll, then I'll pop it off of the plywood, flip it over, and then I'll run it through again. So. Here we go. This planed out beautiful. This is beautiful wood right here. Pull it out a little bit more here. And this is gorgeous. The grain really came out here. So now it's time to pop it off the plywood, flip it over, and then do the other side. All right, got it flipped over off the plywood. Let's do this side. So here's the board, right here. Some black walnut from the forks of salmon. Ended up with a total thickness of one and three eighths of an inch thick. And this is gonna have a live edge. And there is this crack all the way here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Probably have to fill it with epoxy just for strength. So, uh, but yeah, this is done here. 
So on to the next step. Okay, so I've got some walnut milled up here, this black walnut. Uh, just for the legs here, I made a t quick template out of a piece of plywood for the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this. It's a design that I'm going to do. I'm going to just show you how I do one. I'm just going to do these by eye. So I'm not going to use a pattern cutting bit, but I'm going to cut these out all by hand. So let's mark it and go from there. Now, let's take this over the bandsaw. I just brought this slab in to uh, make the stretchers and a couple of cicada shells hitchhiked in here. Made it all the way into the shop. So it is a cicada year, so these guys are all over the place this year. So I'm finding them all out by my bandsaw mill. So anyway, now it's time to make the stretchers. That's the next part here. Okay, so I've done a mock-up here and set up the legs here on top of the boards that are going to come between these uh, exactly how they're going to be. So all I have to do is mark them out here and I'm going to put a slight radius in the middle while leaving the top perfectly straight. So, mark these here. Now I know where to cut it. Each one. Then I can come back and put the radius on it after this is cut because it'll be a lot easier that way. So each one is going to be labeled with each cross stretcher. So now I'm going to cut those out and then put the radius in it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's mark out this radius real quick here. Okay, so I've got all of the legs cut, and I got the stretcher pieces cut, and they are fit pretty snug. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the router, and I'm going to put a little chamfer all the way around on all the edges, just to give it a little bit of a reveal, and it's going to be a really pretty look. So I'm looking forward to this. So this will be really nice. So here we go.
go. That makes for really nice, pretty detail right there. So I'm gonna do the rest of them off camera and then uh, we'll start gluing and screwing these together. So after a few hours of sanding and some really interesting geometry and this took me longer than I would like to admit uh, to figure out the exact angle of how to make these even. So what I'm gonna do is cut a half lap joint on the bottom of this and on the top of this and then make the chamfer on the inside edges too so you really get a definition of this piece going right through the very center. So here I'm going to use a marking knife that I made from an old joiner blade and I'm just going to scribe this out on both sides. So, now it's time to make the half lap joint, and I'll cut that with the handsaw. Okay, so after a little bit of setup here, I've got this marked right on the line, and this is cut at a nice 90 degree angle, and then I put a stop over here on the blind side. I have a mark here, but I put it on the blind side, so that way when the saw hits the wood, it tells me when to stop. So, here we go. So let me take all this off here. And should get a nice cut here. Beautiful. Nice cut right to the bottom. Right on the line. So the next cut I'll do the same thing. And then instead of using a chisel, I think I'm going to use the router with a uh, flat bit on it. And then just hog it out now that I got these cuts done. So that'll be the next plan after I get this cut done. There. Nice clean half lap joint. So, have to do the same thing on this piece. Cut the bottom side of this one and then we can set it down. Now, as this crosses through, I'm going to put a little bit of a chamfer on this just to match. There we go. I'm going to sand that down and that'll look good. I'll do the other side too. I guess I have to flip the whole thing around. Alright, let's see how this fits together here. With the two pieces, put them in there. Nice. That's a good look right there. That's a nice. So now I've got to sand it down and then we've got to put these legs on it. These legs got to go on next. Okay, so I put some masking tape on here because I got this chamfer here on the inside and with black walnut and most other woods, if you get any glue on it at all, it makes it impossible to finish because it just soaks it up, especially this side because this is end grain. So I've got the countersink here for the screws, so I'm going to screw and glue it on right now. So here we go. Let that set up, 
Come back later, and I'll take the tape off after it's set up. But it's a good looking leg. Okay, so I've reached the point, the legs are all together, so now it's time to put finish on the legs. So I'm going to start, put the finish on, I'm going to use the polycrylic uh, Minwax, this stuff is actually really good, a satin finish. So here's my favorite part, here we go. Oh wow, oh god, it's beautiful, oh this black walnut, so pretty. Alright, so we've come to my favorite part now. This is just the bottom, so I'm only going to do two coats on the bottom and then four coats on the top to make it more durable. So, using polycrylic and uh, see what this beautiful grain looks like here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. Wow! Oh my god. This never gets old. I swear this never gets old. This is absolutely riveting. Wow.
All right, so I've got a nice tight fit on here. These are clamped on now, so just to hold them down. But nice tight fit. So this is looking very pretty. So now it's time to flip it over and work on the top. Okay, with every piece of furniture that I make, I like to polish the wood with planar shavings. Now what that does is it's wood on wood and it's better than any kind of steel wool and it polishes the wood right up before I put the finish on it. So that also helps take care of any kind of grain raising that has happened or anything. So I'll get to go in here. You should be able to see the difference almost immediately. Look at that wood shining right up. What this does is it basically puts a finish before the finish. Nice polished finish on the wood. Really brings out the color a lot more. And so it helps to take out any kind of sawdust that may be down in the pores. Always go with the grain, with the direction of the grain. Nice wear you out. Nice polished wood right there. Beautiful. It's ready for the finish. And there it is. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That grain and that color really shines out. Zoom in on the part here. You know, a little bit of a glare there, but it's still wet. But man, that grain is really pretty. <laughs>